Good day learners and welcome to another lesson in life and works of Rizal. Rizal's exile gave him the opportunity to put into practice his educational ideas. He established a school which began with three pupils and in the course of time increased to 16 and later 21. Rizal taught his boys reading, writing, language such as English and Spanish, geography, history, mathematics under arithmetic and geometry, industrial work, nature study, morals, and gymnastics. Rizal conducted his school at his home in Talisay, near the Pitan, where he had his farm and hospital. As you can see in the presentation, on the right lower part of our presentation, we have here the image of Talisay tree. Rizal also created a hymn to Talisay for his pupils to sing. Rizal found Mindanao, a rich virgin field for collecting specimens. With his baroto or a sailboat and accompanied by his pupils, he explored the jungles and coasts seeking specimens of insects, birds, snakes, lizards, frogs, shells, and plants. So those were the his contributions to science. In payment for these valuable specimens, the European scientists sent him scientific books and surgical equipments. One of the lists of ethnographical material collected at the Pitan Berisal for the Dresden Museum. And here are the ethnographical materials collected by Rizal for the Royal Zoological Museum in Dresden, Saxony. During his fourth-year exile in the Pitan, Rizal built up a rich collection of conchology which consisted of 346 shells representing 203 species. He discovered some rare specimens which were named in his honor by the scientists. Specimens collected by Rizal and Father Sanchez now in the Jesuit Museum. Rizal's drawings of fishes caught at the Pitan. The following species discovered by Rizal in the Pitan are the following. Draco Rizali, Flying Dragon, Apogonia Rizali, Small Beetle, Rocoporus Rizali, Rare Frog. The following sp species were named after him. Here it is, Draco Rizali or Draco Rizali. Apogonia Rizali. Rakoporus Rizali. Rizal continued his studies of languages, Visayan Subano Malay language. April 5, 1896 is his last year of exile in the Pitan, and that was the time as well that he wrote to Blumentry. He also learned 22 languages. They have Tagalog, Ilocano, Visayan, Subano, Spanish. Latin, Greek, English, French, German, Arabic, Malay, Hebrew, Sanskrit, Dutch, Catalan, Italian, Chinese, Japanese, Portuguese, Swedish, and Russian. He also drew the three rare species of animal life. He molded a statue representing the mother, dog killing the crocodile by way of avenging her lost puppy, and it is entitled The Mother's Revenge. Other sculptural works of Rizal in the Pitan were a bust of Father Gerico, a statue of a girl called the Pitan Girl, a carving of Josephine Bracken, and a bust of St. Paul which he gave to Father Pastels. He bought 16 hectares of land in Talisay. He introduced a modern methods of agriculture which he had observed in Europe and America. He even imported agricultural machinery from the United States. Rizal is a businessman in partnership with Ramon Carrion, a Dapitan merchant. He made profitable ventures in fishing, copra, and hemp industries. The most profitable business venture of Rizal in Dapitan was in the hemp industry. He also formed business in lime manufacturing. Rizal's inventive ability. Rizal invented a cigarette lighter which he sent as a gift to Blumentritt which 
he called sulpukan. It was made of wood and its mechanism is based on the principle of compressed air. He invented a machine for making bricks that could manufacture about 6,000 bricks daily. Rizal wrote a beautiful poem about his serene life as, as an exile in the Pitan and sent it to his mother. It is entitled Mi Retiro. It is one of the best ever penned by Rizal according to literary critics. Now let's talk about Rizal and Josephine Bracken. Josephine Bracken is an Irish girl of sweet 18. She has blue eyes dressed with elegant simplicity. She was born in Hong Kong on October 3, 1876. Her parents are James Bracken and Elizabeth Jane. James Bracken, a corporal in the British garrison, Elizabeth Jane McBride died in childbirth. And because of that, she was adopted by Mr. George Stoffer, who later became blind. This is what I am telling you a while ago. It is the carving of Josephina Bracken made by Rizal. Mr. Toffer is accompanied by Josephine went to Manila to seek the famous ophthalmic surgeon, Dr. Rizal. They heard in the city that Dr. Rizal was in the Pitan. Rizal and Josephine fell in love with each other at first sight. After a one-month romance, they agreed to marry, but Father Obak, priest of the Pitan, refused to marry them without the permission of the Bishop of Cebu. Hearing of their projected marriage, Mr. Toffer flared up in violent rage for he was unable to endure the thought of losing jo Josephine. He tried to commit suicide by cutting his throat but Rizal grabbed his wrist and prevented him from killing himself. Josephine then went with Toffer to Manila by the first available steamer. Toffer went away, untreated of his blindness because his ailment was incurable. Mr. Toffer returned alone to Hong Kong while Josephine stayed with Rizal's family in Manila. Later, she returned to the Pitan and since no priest would marry them, Rizal and Josephine held hands together and married themselves before the eyes of God. They lived as a man and a wife. Rizal and Josephine lived happily in the Pitan and he was no longer lonely. For him, the Pitan had become a heaven of bliss. Rizal also wrote a poem for Josephine entitled, Josephine, Josephine. In the early part of 1896, Rizal was extremely happy because Josephine was expecting a baby. Unfortunately, he played a prank on her frightening so that she prematurely gave birth to an 8-month baby boy who lived only for 3 hours. This lost son of Rizal was named Francisco in honor of Rizal's father and was buried in the Pitan. Rizal and the Katipunan Andres Bonifacio the Great Plebeian was sowing the seeds of an armed uprising. Katipunan founded on July 7, 1892 and was gaining more and more adherence. Dr. Pia Valenzuela was named emissary to the Pitan in order to inform Rizal of the plan of Katipunan to launch a revolution for freedom's sake. Dr. Valenzuela left on board the steamer Venus, along with him a blind man named Raimundo Mata and a guide in order to camouflage his real mission. Valenzuela told Rizal of the Katipunan plan and of the necessity of his support. However, Rizal objected to Bonifacio's plans because he believed it was premature for two reasons. First, the people are not ready for a revolution. Second, arms and funds must first be collected before raising the cry of revolution. He also disapproved of the plan of Katipunan to rescue him because he had given his word of honor to the Spanish authorities and he did not want to break it. Months before the Katipunan had contacted him, Rizal had offered his services as military doctor in Cuba. It was Blumentree who told him of the deplorable of the health situation in Warrid in Cuba and advised him to volunteer as army physician there. Rizal wrote, to Governor General Ramon Blanco, Despujol's successor, offering his service as military doctor in Cuba. When he least expected it, a letter from Governor Blanco arrived in the Pitan, notifying him the acceptance of his offer, stating that he would be given a safe conduct to Spain. 
Rizal's joy in receiving the gladsome news, at last he was free. Once more, he was going to travel Europe and Cuba. It was with joyous thought of resuming his troubles that he wrote his heartwarming poem, El Canto del Viajero. In English, The Song of the Traveler. July 31, 1896, his four-year exile in the Pitan came to an end. Accompanied by Josephine, Narcisa, Angelica, Narcisa's daughter, he embarked the steamer Espana. Almost all the Pitan folks bid him goodbye, and the town brass band strangely played the dolorous funeral march of Chopin. Adios, the Pitan. Let me end our lesson by asking you what have you learned from our discussion. Kindly put your learnings and realization in the comment section. Thanks for watching. See you in my next one. Please like, leave a comment, subscribe, and hit the bell button for more lessons to learn. Bye!